FBI issued a heightened terror alert. Actually, it's been downgraded to elevated. And they're wanting people to report suspicious activity. We live in Austin. It's kind of a weird and wonderful place. How do you pinpoint a suspicious person? Just look for them. Would you even know what to look for? Not really. How do you pinpoint a suspicious person? Well, like, they look like terrorists. Oh, it's but, leading to racial leading profiling. To I think so. <laughs> racial profiling. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you see someone with a turban, you know, call 911, basically. Yeah. I don't know if someone le left a, you know, backpack in a, you know, crowded group or, you know, I don't know, necessarily think you can just racial profile, but... Can also be like the white guy walking down the street. You know, it can be anybody. So, yeah. so how do you spot suspicious activity in Austin? Uh, I don't know. Being that you're allowed to openly carry semi-automatic weapons, is that seem suspicious to you? Yeah. You're allowed to carry uh, assault rifles. You know, that's pretty suspicious. I think. Do you think that this is going to be helpful and really stop something bad from happening, or make neighbors? suspicious of each other i think uh, make the na uh, neighbor suspicion and uh, be too scared about everything so i don't think it's uh we need to trust but i don't know this time is really uh it's a good time for bad people do bad things it makes you feel any better when i go to the airport if i wear my beard <laughs> you know i i got I got pulled into the interrogation room last time they um they tested my stuff and this is when I, I notice every any time I go to the airport for travel, if I don't have my beard, if I'm clean shaven, it's like one, two, three. But if I have my beard, I look, I guess, kind of Middle Eastern, you know. And then they pull me into the interrogation room. We have wide open borders, so. Well, absolutely. I mean, it definitely paves the way for a lot of discrimination and racism. We've been scared by the media for years and years and years and years, and. Uh, they're never going to stop, and when you start doing that, it becomes like uh, it becomes like crying wolf. You know, people don't listen to it anymore, and so when people are really supposed to be vigilant, they're not going to be because fear has been so hyped. Do you think it's you know kind of pointless though because we have wide open borders? I don't know. I mean, after 9/11, everything changed. You know, so anyone can be a terrorist. Well, and if it's any consolation to the young man that we interviewed here in Austin um, that gets pulled into the interrogation room simply for having a beard, well, now the TSA is going to be increasing screening of its own employees because, as we know, it's contrived security theater meant to pull in innocent people. Now, stick around because we've got some open carry news as well as a little bit of history on Wounded Knee. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well. And he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all at InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which I've never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet. I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things, and if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888 -253 -3139. Well, for years, people have joked about forcing politicians to wear logos uh, representing the big corporations who have bought them out. Well, now this could actually be a reality in California if one advocacy group has their way. Now, this is California is not for sale and they have a potential ballot measure. It's already been submitted to the Office of the Attorney General. Um, it's expected to be able um, to start being able to collect signatures in order to secure its official place on the ballot there in California. This law would require legislators and candidates to sport the emblems of groups that donate money to their campaigns. Now, in August, the group uh, organized a protest outside the state Capitol building. They set up life-size cutouts of over 121 state legislators, including Governor Jerry Brown. They were all decorated with their corporate donors' logos from 7-Eleven to AT&T and Walmart. And this is a genius idea. I think that they should have to do this. All of the candidates that are running for president should also have to sport their emblems. And you know what? Hey, if you don't take money from these big corporations, then you don't have to wear any bling. Now, the reason why this group is doing this is that they said that this legislator, legislature has been plagued with multiple ethics violations and hearings. Uh, last year, members of the governing body were flown to Maui. There they met with corporate executives and union bosses. They funded that trip by funneling funds through a nonprofit organization. I mean, it goes on and on. The list goes on. So now they say, um, in addition to requiring lawmakers to wear the logos of their top 10 contributors every time they appear in the legislature, the proposed measure would also require political candidates to disclose their top 10 donors in political advertisements. And uh, the, the group's leader says, it's a corrupt system and it's got to change. Now, the group needs to receive 365,000 signatures to secure a spot on the 2016 ballot. They say they're confident that they're going to meet those requirements. And the group's representative says, as California is not for sales website asserts, big money in politics has gone too far. Average citizens don't have a voice and it's time that changes. By highlighting big money in politics, we can raise awareness around this issue and give citizens the voice they deserve. So this is very important. If you want to get involved, 
with this measure, go to their website. It is CaliforniaIsNotForSale.com. See what you can do to help them get the signatures that they need. And you know what? Hopefully this can be a nationwide thing soon or a requirement if you want to run for president because that is a big issue. We need to get big money out of politics. And it's a huge problem there in California. We saw, of course, uh, with these latest mandatory vaccination campaign that a lot of the politicians that were behind it were also getting funds there from Big Pharma. And of course, it would be interesting to find out who there in the California legislature is being sponsored uh, for this gun grab push. Now, starting on January 1st, California is going to allow the seizure of guns without notice. Uh, so basically, uh, this is going to allow authorities to seize a person's weapons for 21 days if a judge determines that their potential, there is a potential for violence. So this provides family members with the means of having an emergency gun violence restraining order. They can have it imposed against a loved one if they can convince a judge that allowing that person to possess, possess a firearm poses an immediate and present danger of causing personal injury to himself um, or another person by having a gun in their custody. So totally subjective law there. And we've already seen them um, seizing guns from people's homes without notice, claiming mental um, disorders and things like that. Now, meanwhile, in Texas on January 1st, we are going to start uh, seeing open carry. And with that in mind, the Round Rock Police Department here has released a video to educate the public on open carry. They want to avoid getting calls from frantic citizens. So take a look at this video that's making uh, this commercial that's making its rounds here in Austin. They have a gun. Effective January 1st, open carry is legal in the state of Texas. Law allows licensed citizens the right to carry handguns in plain view in a waist or a shoulder holster. Before you call 911, ask yourself, is the gun out of its holster? Is the person acting reckless, threatening, or a danger to the public? If you see something suspicious, call 911. Be open carry aware. You know, Australia is a good example, Canada is a good example, the UK is a good example. Why? Because each of them had mass killings. Somebody somewhere will comment and say, Obama politicized this issue. Well, this is something we should politicize. I'm not going to carry a gun. I don't want to be involved in a gun fight. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. Go ahead. Make my day. So the notion that gun laws don't work is not borne out by the evidence. He says that the Chicago police had a plan over this bloody 4th of July weekend. Nonetheless, as you indicated, Corey, there was uh, a uh, count of casualties that could have been from Afghanistan or Iraq. We'll make it uh, harder for law-abiding citizens and criminals will still get their guns. In many cases, the offenders, uh, felons, uh, some out on parole, some out on bond. We have to respect the tradition in this country of people who want to defend themselves and their family from violence. There are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The average American does not have that. Mayor Bloomberg, why, why, why can you defend yourself but not... The majority of Americans, I mean, look at, look at the team of security you got. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. And we need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Was this the weapon of choice for a new kind of terrorist? When a five-year-old girl said she and a classmate should shoot each other with bubbles, the school called it a terrorist threat. AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. 
You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. Lay down your arms, you damned rebels! 